Good afternoon guys, Mark here. Another quick video. So I'm smoking a Papa Freitas. One of uh, Uncle Willie's favourite cigar. It's just got a band on this, look at the cap on this guys. It's pretty deep, you can see the join line there. It's all the way down, a real big cap on this because they have a little pig's tail light and I just knocked it off. I've not even cut it, look. I'm just gonna try so I'm just gonna try a different one, you know, different just to see uh, the draft the draft the the draught seems good on it. But I thought rather than cut it I give it a try you just taking the um take the pigtail off. Anyway, just a little uh, video here. A couple of things I've been watching today and just uh, want to offer my congratulations to Gary, Papa Bear, on his birth of his grandson. So uh, again, he was smoking a nice cigar in celebration. And why not? So I thought I'd join you, Gary. Congratulations, sir. Uh, Uncle Willie, he's been in touch with Piper Ken, saying he's getting better. He's actually, you know, he's actually back home now and he's actually had a pipe, even though we can't taste it very much. Ken, wish you all the best, to, you know, let's get, get, get well soon. And um, go and check out B Dog's latest video, you know, on subs, on views. Some interesting comments in that. Go and check it out, guys. Also want to say thanks for the advice on the 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 loose um, stem with the uh, the mason pipe or the owl pipe I had. Might get down to smoking it now if I can find the other half. It that is. Ah oh, man, I wish I I wish I'd put things in a safe place. <laughs> so I'll have to, I'm gonna have to dig that out weekend. I'm actually off Friday and Saturday this week, so I'm uh, yeah I'm gonna have to dig that out and start smoking the bloody thing see whether I can get some of that colour back on the stem which I think is going to be hard because it's, as you see where that stem is on them pipes it's pretty high up on the on the um, on the stem where I've taken off the um, the colour I've bodged it but there you go only me smoking it anyway Simon go and check out Simon's little waffle on his Tuesday uh, talking about people you know parking up other people's driveways and stuff like that because he's got parking issues where he is in London but I've seen a lot of videos I've seen a lot of information on that where you can legally park on someone else's drive and you can't do nothing about it and if they damage your vehicle or try and remove said vehicle you can do them for it believe it or not yeah it's, um, unless they want to take out I'm not sure I'm not 100% sure I'm not sure what they can do where uh, you know, I know there's 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 videos out there. I've seen stuff on internet. I've seen, you know, seen a lot of information that they can't. There's no there's no law against parking on someone else's drive, whether they own the property or not. Yeah, it's a weird one that you know. I know, like I said, I've known vehicles. I've heard stories where someone's had a car parked on their on their front or their driveway for two or three years, and they've tried DVLA, you know, freedom of information thing or whatever it is. Um, they can't get hold of the owner to move the car, but if you if 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 the if the uh, person who's doesn't like their car being in their way, as long as you're not blocking their access to their property, there's nothing they can do. Yeah, and uh, yeah, because it's just one of them. Unfortunately, it's just one of them weird bylaws. I think. Don't quote me on that though. But I'm just, that's what I've seen. That's what I've seen. I think Simon, you're looking for someone to. You're saying yeah, the, the 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 changes of your car, and obviously the issues of your vehicle. You know the old. Yeah, it's an old vehicle, maybe. You know, it's an old van. It's, it is. It's, it's. I think it is. Like you said, you think it's on its last legs, and I think you're just throwing good money after bad now, mate. I think it is time to change your vehicle. 
you know, you have the issues with the brakes, and if you was having to go on holiday, somebody, soon somebody seems to bite you on the ass with it. Yeah, I think it's time to change it, my friend. Now, it's not. I don't. I don't. It's a case of it because your son has been driving and he changes the mechanics on it. I think it's all. I think it's in your head, my friend. You know, honestly, because it's and the car's there to produce. You know, to do. You know, to go forwards, go backwards, and you know, get you from A to B, and it doesn't matter what. You know. You know, it's not unless he's changing something in the computer or the, you know, on the car, or he's, you know, messing around with the settings or something, you know, in the CPU of the car. Nah. <laughs> I think it's, I think, I think he's possibly subconsciously trying to look, trying to look to blame someone without realising it. But, and also get yourself some sleep. It's no good having a couple of hours a night or a morning in your case. No good for your body. Well, look, you know, like you said, you admitted you fell asleep in the chair. And for a big man like you, Simon, that ain't doing you any good. Not going to do your health any good. Not going to do your mental abilities any good. Your mental attitude or whatever. You need to get some proper sleep, my friend. You need to get yourself back into some sort of rhythm where you're sleeping properly, or your body will, body will tell you, and it won't be in a nice way. And if you are having problems sleeping, you know, you've got to go to the doctors, mate. You've got to go to the doctors, get yourself checked out or something. If you're not sleeping right, there's something, there's something on your mind. You know, you can't switch off or something. You've got to be able to wind down, my friend. You've got to be able to wind down. So I'm just having this cigar as quick uh, I think it's Kuro, it's a Corona size, isn't it? Papa Bratos. Like I said, uh, I don't know if I said it at the start of the video before I picked the missus up from work. Didn't have a very nice time in work last night. They put me on a, uh, a route I don't like. When I told them loads of times I don't like it because of my uh, acrophobia. And uh, there's certain roads that closed down again last night, but made it even worse for me. So I got hold of a got hold of me uh, me manager today and sent him some messages. And he said, "Leave it with me." I said, "Listen." I said, "The hours I'm getting on enough hours." I said, there's favouritism going on there, as in all places. I said, I'm not happy with it. I said, I enjoy the job. I don't want to leave it. I just, you know, and um, you should leave it with me. So we'll see what happens. I'm all right for going south of the country, you know, from Warrington downwards, you know, but north and across. No, I don't like it. I don't like going across the Pennines, Newcastle that way, and, you know, because there's a lot of hills and stuff and roads I don't like, like travelling on but you know we have this duty of care now when, uh, when in, with employers you know so they're supposed to be able to you know meet me halfway sort of thing you know so it's not causing me stress or anything like that out which it is at the moment you know doing some of this driving and some people say well, you know why drive then it's only on certain, on certain notes like if you know what acrophobia is it's a it's, uh, it's my fear of heights and some of the roads I do get scared on because they got chops on. You know, it sounds might sound silly to you, but living with it is no fun. I'm telling you, no fun. I just want to see. Uh, oh yeah, check out uh, Piper Dave's video. He's got his tupperdoor sorted out with all the cigars. It's a short video, but it's he got some fantastic smokes he has. And, uh, yeah, like I said, yeah, them. I said a lot of people sell them boxes, Dave, them cigar boxes. They do go for the can, go for a few quid as well. So uh, maybe, like I said, like I said in the comments, you know, maybe get a few boxes together and sell them as a bundle and pass the, the proceeds on to charity or something like that. I mean, they go for silly money in the UK. Some of these, some of these boxes go for like £20 in the UK. And that Podomo box, what a beautiful box that is. It's a bit like my my. I got a couple of the the Oliva ones which are polished, as you, as you know, got like a polished like a burgundy and gold with gold Oliva lettering. Real nice boxes. And yeah, that's, that's well that's my suggestion. <coughs> yeah, you might only tell me the way to go and shove it. I don't care. But uh, hang on. But going back to your other advice, I don't don't take offence, mate. I have taken said comments off the video what he was on about uh, and 
that's just so other people don't jump on the bandwagon and yeah you are 100% correct and yeah I am going to take notice of what you said for once you know I don't mean for once from you I mean from you know I'm going to take the advice for once you know so yeah so your pipe is not going to happen me or the thing I was on about this morning is not going to happen like I said I'm going to take Dave's advice and uh, do what he said basically he's on, he's on about saying get your life in order a bit better than what it is so that's what I'm going to do good sticks these Uncle Willie I tell you no wonder they're, uh, they're one of your favourites Real good burn. Looks a little bit flaky in places. But Dave was smoking one the other night. And um, perfect white ash on it. I don't know whether that was the, the Podomo we were smoking. And you know, it's the ash, ash stuck on cigar. And uh, obviously, good quality cigar, you'll always get that. I think Gary Papp there was smoking on the same night and he had uh, and his cigar was doing exactly the same real nice burn on it nice ash but it's great for um, it's great for cleaning silver with by the way guys if you didn't know keep your ash on your cigars I tend to keep a little bit because I've always got cigar, you know, cigar and ash and then just rub it onto your silver of your pipes just rub it on puff it up I can't believe something like that Pop, I don't know what it is how does cigar ash polish up silver I wonder if it does it on the pipe tobacco ash only one way to find out <laughs> yeah it's all ash isn't it it's all tobacco and I think with the uh, with cigar ash you can get a big uh, you can get a big you get a nice piece of it between your, your thumb and finger and rub it in properly I don't know what I've done my mistake guys <laughs> me ashtray me even Maria me ashtray got a glass base in it I tipped it out the other day and I tipped the glass into the bin. Into the refuse into the refuse bin. Yeah, like the, like I say in Dave, I am gonna take your advice. I've got more than enough what I need really when I think about it. I think, I think this is the case of a uh, pad, tad, cad. You know, it's just, you just can't help buying it. You know, just can't help buying. But yeah, I got to, I got to pull the reins in, and you know, the, you know, because it's you know, it's been running away with me a little bit. You know, I've got to be honest. Because if I don't, what I've talked about in the past, Dave's hit on. 
I won't get things done. I won't get things accomplished, let's say. Don't talk about it, do it. So, hopefully, tonight in work, if they send me on the same route, I'm going to tell them where to go. Because I don't get if they have to give me a more local route. I'm not doing what they want me to do, unfortunately. You can either meet me halfway. And I've told them about said issues I've got, you know, from when I started. It's not just something I've decided I don't like doing. I've told them that from the start, so they do know about it. They keep putting me on said route, which I don't like. Cause not only is it short, I'm losing hours. You know, the, the guy who's given me the uh, the jobs to do, looking after his own, like, you know. And, uh, yeah, so I just said, listen, listen, I told me manager today, I'm not happy with it. I said, I'm not stupid, it's not, you know, it all goes on, it goes on everywhere, no matter what, what work you do, it goes on everywhere. You know, you got your blue-eyed boys, you know, people looking after each other, you know, watching their own people's watching other people's backs etc but when I'm losing hours and I'm thinking about I was thinking about it you know these some of these guys are getting 60 70 hours a week and others are struggling to get 40 it's not on it's not on and you go pick the missus up and she's like oh, you've been smoking again <laughs> She, she definitely smell this on me. Can anyone get any pictures of that uh, super moon last night? Any decent photographs? I was coming down the um, what we call. This, this road I don't like going on, it's called it's through the Pennines it, go, it goes, runs west to east across the country yeah, because it's all good you, if you look at the UK, come out in the middle of the UK and go left, you know, left to right it runs through the, it's called the Pennines a lot of hills, a lot of high, you know stuff like that um, and it just, like I said, it scares the living daylights out of me because there's big drops on the, you know, on this road but if you come in from the other way and you can see the road twist, you know, in the hills and all that. It's like that, you know, it bends round and all that. You can see all the lights in the central reservation. And oh, if I could, if I could have stopped, which also you can't. If I could have stopped, because the moon was really low and it looked like it was just sitting on top of the road, and just above the lights on the central reservation, because you can see the lights going down. You know, it's, <laughs> it's like a track. You know, the lights were and the. And it just looked like oh, what a picture that would make. But obviously, I'm not allowed to stop on the on the roads unless it's an emergency. It'd be in a motorway or an interstate, as you call it. It's only about 70 miles, you know, on you know, on that road. But man, it puts the willies up me. I tell you, it does. For me, you know, from, from suffering from acrophobia. It's like a white knuckle ride for me. I, you know, we have four lanes or three lanes depending on where part of the road you're on. I have to drive in the middle of it because that's where I feel safest. Well, I do like me driving. That's a funny bit. You know, I do like me driving, but there's roads like that. It just puts the willies up me. It scares the living daylights out of me. Right guys, I'm going to finish the cigar, I'm going to pick the missus up, have something to eat before they go to work. So then I've got, I'll be on a full stomach for work. So I don't really, I don't really take stuff into work to eat or anything, you know, and I don't like going to these service stations or stopping off at places because it gets bloody expensive.
especially if you do five, six nights a week on the road. So normally I like to fill up before I go, and then I'm full for the ship. You know, maybe take some snacks and so on. You know, take a flask of water, make sure I'm, you know, or I'll take tea or coffee, one of the two, depending on what I feel on. You know. But, um, I always make sure I've got plenty to drink, that's for sure. And not much one of these for these, um, sodas or pops or, well, we call them pops over here, you know, canned drinks and whatever. And not much for, for them, really. But normally I do tea. 90% of the tea, you know, if I'm driving, it'll be, it'll be tea. And then, uh, I drink a lot of me coffee sometimes. Like I say, if I'm on a cigar or if I'm on a, or if I'm off, you know, if I'm off a day, I've got my day off work, that's when I drink most of me coffee. When I can be bothered to make it, that is. Because <laughs> yeah, I do like me, me fresh ground coffee. Right guys, I'll love you and leave it again. Enjoy your Tuesday evening, Tuesday afternoon, or whatever you are. Again, as always, if you're feeling under the weather, get well soon. Wish you all well. Enjoy your smokes, whatever it may be, whatever shape, form you decide to smoke, pipe, cigar, or otherwise. And uh, take care, everybody. Wish you all well, and I'll see you on the next Welshies Waffle. Take care, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated.